In this episode, we shall learn about the true identity of the crane and the esoteric interpretation of the incidents that shall take place. Four of the five Pandavas had already fallen dead while Yudhishthira waited long. None of his brothers returned. It was at that time that Duryodhana summoned the Kritya with Tantrika practices. With the will of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna, the Kritya came to the banks of the same pond where the four Pandavas lay lifeless. She saw the four bodies and instantly concluded that her mission was already accomplished. So she disappeared. The grace of the Lord lies in recognizing that the Pandavas were oblivious to the act of Duryodhana and the impending danger in the form of Kritya. This hung like a sword on top of their heads. Yet, everything was solely taken care of by the Lord. Even in day-to-day -day life, the Lord protects His devotees from many unseen dangers about which the devotee is unaware. The instances could be many. The devotee is after all a jiva and has limited understanding of the dangers that threaten him throughout his lifespan. But a true devotee is aware of the Lord and depends on Him for His complete protection. Devotees often wonder why the Lord does not reveal the instances wherein He comes to their rescue in times of danger. The sages have given a reason for it. An individual in this world is dominated by the false ego. People do not like to depend on anyone. They try to solve problems themselves, driven by their mad egos. Due to ignorance, we individuals do not understand that we are being saved every moment due to His infinite protective grace. But the Lord knows that we shall never recognize His grace. So He decides to protect us anyway without informing us about His self-assumed duty of protecting us. Even dangers come to us with divine consent so that we learn our lessons. But our egos keep us in ignorance. We continue to be obstinate with our whims and fancies. We continue to be fooled by the so-called protection of this false world instead of accepting and depending on divine direct protection. A live example of this is life insurance policies. People buy many life insurance schemes. The term life insurance is a misnomer. The scheme provides you with some money in return for your life. It comes at a cost. It comes with a premium that the individual goes on paying for half his life. Moreover, if the insured person does not die, he hardly gets any returns. The insurance company gobbles up all his savings and money interest. It returns our money as it is while eating up all the cream interest that we would have derived otherwise. The only genuine life insurer is the Lord himself and no one else. This is the goal of sadhana and mantras. But this has to be realized. The death of the Pandavas was temporary as planned by Lord Krishna. We have heard doctors pronounce several people as clinically dead. But astonishingly, many have risen from the dead even in Kaliuga. Many others have undergone a complete death experience after having been declared dead and have somehow come back to life. Many of the modern population may try to write off such a story. But such events keep happening in many corners of the world even today. Continuing with the Yaksha story. When Kritya left the residence of Duryodhana, Yudhishthira walked towards the pond, quite worried about the state of his dear brothers. He saw the bodies of his four brothers and was left horrified, struck with wonder and confusion as to who could have killed such valiant beings capable of conquering the three worlds all by themselves. Dharmaraja Yudhishthira looked around. He spotted a white crane near the water pond and started speaking to him. The crane said, I am the one who slew your brothers. This pond belongs to me. Your unfortunate brothers did not answer my questions and that is the reason they lie dead here. You cannot be a mere bird because a bird can never possess the power to slay my mighty brothers. So, I urge you to take your original form, replied Yudhishthira. No sooner did Yudhishthira conclude his statement than the bird transformed itself into the form of a yaksha. Yakshas are beings who are just below the standard of devatas and partially belong to the class of demons of noble conduct. I have come to test you. That was the entire purpose of my visit to this place, said the yaksha. Now, listeners may wonder why the crane came into its visible form after having killed the four Pandavas remaining invisible. When Yudhishthira, also known as Dharmaraja, asked the crane to reveal its original form, 
the yaksha came forth abandoning the form of the crane there is a deeper meaning hidden in this event of form transformation the voice that the pandavas heard can be mapped to the invisible voice that warns every living being that is the voice of the soul however people keep ignoring the knocks of truth that keep coming from within and instead prefer to follow the dictates of the mind which sees profit in the sense of enjoyment yudhishthira is dharma raja the personification of satya or dharma a living repository of the shastras for a being with such an elevated conduct the invisible form hidden within takes shape it comes forth when a person accepts truth and lives by it this is to affirm that no illusion can cheat the eyes of dharma it can be practically experienced by a truthful man who witnesses the hidden form of truth taking other forms like circumstances people situations events and time the form of the white crane also has symbolism the whiteness of the crane represents truth revealing itself the form of the crane carried a fakeness with it the initiator of the crane form had yet not come to light but when a man sticks to truth and never lets go of what is righteous truth assumes a better form resembling reality this is the secret behind the crane transforming itself into the form of yaksha then the real test begins when the yaksha poses tough questions in front of dharmaraja dharmaraja must answer the questions with patience and truthfulness this is to say that a sadhaka must stick to truthfulness if he intends to discover the nature of the absolute truth right now we are all stuck in the maze of relative truth this is the only option available to us if we do not accept this form of relative truth our journey towards the ultimate truth is stunted the one who relies on falsehood will be dragged into an eternal world of illusion from where reclaiming reality will only be a far fetched dream